Hello and welcome my friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you guys so very much for spending some time with me today and watching this video. And of course, in this video, I'm going to be looking at this week and completing my weekly reading for the week of October 18th through the 24th. Well, we're getting into October now and that veil is starting to thin. And some of you may have already started working with this thinning veil, working to strengthen your abilities and gain added direction and support. And if you haven't, don't worry. We have plenty of time. The veil is at its thinnest on October 31st, so we still have time to give ourselves a little extra support and try on those connecting and channeling training wheels that October brings us. Additionally, this week, we're into full swing Mercury retrograde. And I myself, I know I've been having technical difficulties and, well, challenges. However, like any challenge, it's about dusting yourself off, picking yourself up, and moving forward, learning and experiencing all you can from that situation. It's important that we continue to learn and evolve, no matter what challenge or obstacle we face. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at this week. How to overcome those challenges, overcome those obstacles, maintaining that high vibration so that you do have more of an ability to connect in, seek out those opportunities, and experience and learn from a joyous point of view rather than that challenge point of view. And I couldn't think of two better decks to tap into some of that darkness and light than the Black Cat's Tarot and the Everyday Witch's Oracle. We are going with more of a feline feel this week. However, I felt that we needed that added guidance and support from a four-legged friend. And like always, I have links below to both these fantastic decks, so should they speak to you, you can go check them out for yourselves. The selections, well, as you can see, I've got Amazonite, Picture Stone, and Rose Quartz. I want you to choose whichever crystal resonates with you the most right now, then head down to that description box below. You're going to see timestamps there. Click on that correlating timestamp to your crystal. It will take you straight to your reading, and I will see you there, my friends. Hello and welcome my Amazonite friends. This reading is especially for you. Now like always, I have the full decks of both the tarot and the oracle cards so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the week holds for my Amazonite friends. What can my Amazonite friends expect from the week of October 18th through the 24th? fire magic. It's time to light those fires. And I don't know about you, but it's snowing here. So there is a lot of fireplaces being lit and the heat is coming. Uh, unfortunately, so are the snow blowers. So bear that in mind. Um, <laughs> it can get noisy in the background sometimes. The fire magic. We're looking at that inner flame. No, you don't have to be pagan or a witch or, or what have you. Knowing that you have that inner flame, that willpower, that drive, that passion, it's going to help you move forward. And we're going to need that this week. Yeah, of course we have that ability to tap into the thinning veil. We also have the challenge of Mercury retrograde. And let's be honest, we need that courage more than ever. Let's get into this week a little bit more for you. 
What does the beginning of the week bring my Amazonite friends? I love this deck. I think it's very beautiful. Unfortunately, because they've really gone all out with the black, it can be pretty dark. The Four of Cups. Like I said, it looks darker than it really is. But that four, we're looking at that stability. And we need it right now. We need that stabilizing energy. Helps us to really harness our courage and our determination because we're well, functioning from a more stable foundation. That cup, of course, we're looking at that intuition. Now the four of cups, talks about missing that bigger picture. Missing those key messages, that direction. In the original card, and I know it's there's lots going on here, looks like a little party almost, but in the original card there's a man sitting under a tree looking forlornly, which we have here, he looks kind of just blah, at three cups. And there's a third or fourth cup floating in the air. It symbolizes and really has that same feel as the Ace of Cups because you still have that same hand with the, the wispy clouds around it, that Holy Grail. And that's what we're looking at is the misconnection. Many of us are feeling overwhelmed and burdened and burnt out and at a point of breaking. It's because we're not gaining that holy grail. We're not embracing those life-giving aspects. Our guides, our guardian, our support team has been trying to give to us. We haven't been acknowledging it and some of us have been resisting it. Last week and the week before I started bringing out meditations to help connect into our support team better. And this would be a fantastic time to start to make that connection and grab that holy grail so we don't feel so blah and burnt out. Connecting into aspects and pieces that are more life-giving, more joyous, and most importantly, more fulfilling. Taking that time in the beginning of the week to connect in. That veil is thinning, that connection is going to be a bit easier. And as we go throughout this week and into the next week, and as we hit to the 31st, those connecting pieces, they're going to be easier. And, well, a lot more meaningful because we're not going to be struggling or we won't have that time to question ourselves and our abilities. There are links below and I'll put one above for my Just You and Me playlist and you'll find it. If you haven't participated in the introduction, please do so. It's the starting off point to a tool that I go forward with in the second one. And that's where you're going to find that connection and we're going to be able to strengthen that tool. So even if you have abilities and you've been working on and dabbling in your uh, channeling abilities and connecting in with your team, please start off with the beginning one. That way you understand that tool and as I speed through it in that second video, it's not going to be so overwhelming and you're going to be able to get more from that tool than should you start in the second one. So that connection, that missed meaning, that's an important part. It really will reignite and bring in that passion into our lives. Many of us are missing that right now. Let's go into the middle of the week. What does the middle of the week bring? My Amazonite friends. Oh yes it does. The Magician. I love this card. He is just owning himself. And that's what we need to do. 
rekindle those passions, really tap into our skills, our abilities, combining the two with everyday aspects, everyday pieces, to make that magic happen. Those miracles, that joy, that fulfillment, and of course that abundance. The more we're able to combine our skills, abilities, and passions into one package, rather than separate compartments, and bring them into our everyday, that's when we're going to gain the most out of our experience, out of that day. We won't feel so disconnected. We'll be excited and invigorated to do more, to branch out and strengthen these skills, apply them to new areas. See how this fire will erupt. And on to the end of the week. What can my Amazonite friends expect from the end of the week? Oh yeah, the lovers. We go from this forlorning card and we start to go from that everyday non-existence to these bigger shifts. We've got double major arcana. We've got that shift coming. And it's not a big shift. It's connecting into self, understanding self. And the more we're able to connect into that passion, connect into those missing pieces, that guidance, taking those baby steps helps to raise our vibration helps us to feel better and in more control of our existence. That in itself helps us to be able to connect in with others more fully. So my Amazonite friends who have that special someone in their lives, you're going to feel that that relationship, that connection is strengthened, giving you more time, more energy, to indulge and spend time with that person. Additionally, those who are looking, this is a fantastic time to do so. And of course, we want to keep our health and our well-being in number one priority. However, this is a fantastic time to put yourself out there and connect in with people that you may or may not know right now that are going to be a fantastic addition and support for you. As your vibration rises, so does your energetic signature. And those individuals who have walked with you in other lifetimes, your soulmate, your well, soul family, your astral family, they are drawn to you by that energy signature. And it's going to shine bright at the end of the week as we start to own ourselves our abilities, we start to find that direction and meaning. And will we get that full picture? No. But we'll get a few pieces, those little nuggets that we can put together and start to see that puzzle come together a bit more, gaining that understanding and that direction. We don't want to make big leaps and bounds right now. We already feel, you know, burnt out, we feel at the end of our, well, tolerance levels. We want that stable, supported movement. It's going to bring in the most meaning for us. So let's look at the challenge, because this week looks fantastic. What challenge will my Amazonite, whoa, I forgot how jumpy this deck is. Amazonite friends face for the week of October 18th through the 24th. I ask them to keep the deck and cards on the table. They get really excited sometimes. We have the King of Pentacles, that Midas touch. We're not going to see or understand how the nuggets that we get especially in the beginning of the week, 
and of course we can gain further guidance throughout the rest of the week. But how these nuggets and pieces fit together. We're going to question that guidance, question our ability to receive that guidance, and question the validity of making changes. Like I said, most of us are feeling very overwhelmed. It's hard to feel courageous when you're feeling exasperated. Trusting in you and trusting in your abilities will go a long way in turning Midas here from an obstacle to an ally. There's no mistaking why we have the magician following the Four of Cups, because the more we're able to follow that guidance, the more we're going to, well, own our abilities. We need to trust in our abilities. And that's exactly what the magician is encouraging us to do. Our ego will be questioning not only our abilities, but the feasibility of this. And it's in that uncertainty that's going to cause stagnation. And we're going to miss out on some amazing aspects and pieces that are going to bring in that joy, that harmony, and of course, that abundance. Because you're connecting into aspects and pieces that create passion, that create well, a higher vibrational self that isn't feeling so out of sorts. We feel connected, we feel understood because we are understanding us. We're more able to use these abilities to broaden our horizons and embrace and bring in more abundance, not to mention strengthening our manifestation skills. All right, let's go on to some blessings. What blessing can we share with my Amazonite friends for the week of October 18th through the 24th? healing waters. Like I said, we're feeling out of sorts. We're feeling burnt out. We need to take care of ourselves, strengthen us, so that we're able to embrace these amazing pieces. At the space we're feeling right now, let's be honest, we're not open to anything. We've closed ourselves down and shut down. We need to set some intentions, work on us so we can embrace this message. Embrace these aspects that are going to bring in so much more to our lives. And it's not going to be a burden. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to feel, well, light as air. That healing water will go a long way in amplifying that courage, that passion that inner fire. Water is a fantastic element to connect into when you're trying to clear yourself out. You can set intentions before you have a bath or a shower and just watch that gunky build up. Just melt away from you and go down the drain and away. Now don't worry your guardian angel will be there to transmute it, so it's not going to harm anything or anyone. But you're going to feel amazing. You can do the same in a bath. The important piece is setting those intentions. If you're not quite sure how to do that, you can always tap in to some of the healing meditations that I have. One that comes in loud and clear is Archangel Haniel or Archangel Christiel. They're moon archangels. They both connect into that lunar energy and are fantastic at starting to clear people out. And it's that buildup and that overwhelmingness that we need to release so we're open to and able to connect into that amazing support team that's been there and has been trying to share something with you for some time now. 
And don't worry, they don't get frustrated. They just keep doing it and doing it and doing it until we get it. It's really a thankless job. And most of us have done it in other lifetimes where we were guides for well, other astral family members or even some of our own guides right now. It's, some, it's a role that many of us have taken on and have been in that thankless position of representing and representing and representing the same thing until they got it, or at least tried to attempt it. Give love. We need out of this stuckness. The more we stay in an exasperated state, in a space of burnout, we're going to spiral downwards into depression, and then, well, we're really stuck. Focusing in and giving love will help us stay afloat a bit longer until we can clear some of this out, connect in to what's really meaningful for us. And when I say give love, sure, for others, absolutely. But most importantly, to ourselves. We need to strengthen us before we can connect in with others. Staying in that high vibration really does go a long way in helping you and then helping others. All right, let's end off on any further guidance. Whoa, this cart, these cards are so jumpy. <laughs> any other further guidance, wisdom, and insight that we can share with my Amazonite friends for the week of October 18th through the 24th. Some cards you really find are jumpy. This deck loves to, well, hit the floor. Sorry about that. <laughs> They're doing construction in my area. The snowfall and everything else is causing electrical difficulties. Plus we're Mercury retrograde, so technology has not been working as well as we'd hoped. So without further ado, let's resume where we started off from. We have the Queen of Pentacles, a reminder of how nurturing and self-care can you know, help things grow. You can see in the card how there's things starting to grow here, and we need that patience and that nurturing, and of course that love, to allow things to grow and go forward. And, well, that's very true to what we're looking at. Like I said, we need to take small, steady, stable steps. If we take leaps and bounds, we're going to feel unstable and we'll regress quite quickly, especially when our ego starts to give us a little bit of challenge, that resistance. It's essential that we take that time and allow things to grow naturally rather than rushing. Many of us we don't like it when we have to wait. However, some delayed gratification will really bring in that abundance that we need. The Two of Swords. That balance, that duality. Very much needed this week. The more balanced we are, and when I say balanced, I mean we're functioning from a space of calm and we feel that our energies are being exerted in a way and manner that is well, making us feel better. We're not so hyper focused in and well sending all our energy into one aspect because when we do that similar to this card where you have some areas of growth that are just emerging and you have others that are flourishing, that's what happens. And that's when you bring in that overwhelming burden and burnout energy because you're focusing so intently on one aspect of your life. Taking that step back, focusing in on us a little bit, strengthening and empowering us will go a long way in the challenges that this week brings us. 
Additionally, we have that sword. We need to be functioning from that head space rather than our heart space. Yes, we need to share love, of course, but we can't get caught up into it because our ego will use this to its advantage and send that heartache. Just said balance is going to be key. So of course we want to you know, focus in on that love and try and well, nurture us and as a result we're going to nurture those around us. But when we start to feel that overwhelming sadness and heartache, it's when we bring in the, the, the big guns, the big knives, and cut it down to size. Critically thinking, well, your ego can't hold up to it, nor can that heartache. When you start to assess and look at why it's occurring right now, how it's supporting you, and what you're trying to achieve. And finally, we have the Seven of Wands. Of course, we're looking at that no fear, not backing down for anything, energy. Taps right back into that courage. We're not backing down. We know this is something that we need because we're tired of feeling stuck. We're tired of feeling unwell and unhappy. We're willing to put up a bit of a battle against that, well, demonic lion, also known as our ego. Batting it back through that courage, that willpower, that determination. Invigorated and powered by your passions. It's a hard, well, obstacle for your ego to overcome. When we don't back down, your ego, well, there's not much it can do. It's going to bring in that heartache and fear. However, when we focus in on that passion and that willpower, we can drive it back. And in some cases, easier than we thought. It may be a challenge but one we can easily overcome when we set our mind to it. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found it fun and helpful and that you were able to gain some guidance and wisdom into what the week offers you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There is so much more amazing coming your way, my friends. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight and guidance is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page. I know, lots of people have them. And of course, I've got lots of tears and many perks. And those perks, of course, are free readings and healings. Additionally, I have a Patreon-exclusive library of videos, just for my supporters. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Amazonite friends. Hello, and welcome, my Picture Stone friends. This reading is especially for you. Now, like always, I have the full decks of both the tarot and the oracle cards, so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, let's see what the week holds for my Picture Stone friends. What can my Picture Stone friends expect from the week of October 18th through the 24th? Go with the flow. Kind of sums up what we need to do this week, in a nutshell. We need to be less controlling and more easygoing, more flexible. Because that rigidity and that, well, blinders on well, makes you miss a lot of that beauty and that journey. 
that fulfillment that we're looking for. It's been a struggle to get to this point in this year, and we're still going to have those challenges that the year holds for us. However, when we slow down, just relax a bit. Take away that control, which, by the way, is a false control. We're able to well, see that beauty, that joy, and gain more fulfillment in our everyday. Rather than hit and miss fulfillment and joy, we have an ongoing, well, stream, if you will, of joy in our everyday. Let's look at how this week will unfold. What does the beginning of the week bring, my picture stone friends? The Three of Wands. Now, threes in tarot, we're always looking at that expression and that growth. And the more we relax, the more we stop pushing so hard against that current, the more well, we're going to be able to grow, the greater the distance we're going to be able to achieve. And Distance really isn't something that is measurable, but that growth, that growth is exponential. We resist and we challenge well, what is happening and we're paddling upstream, which takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. Or we could be using that time and energy in more life-giving opportunities that bring in that creativity that passion and when we connect into that that's when we gain that fulfillment we don't need to be in the driver's seat so much we can enjoy that journey well, more often let's look at the middle of the week what does the middle of the week bring my picture stone friends I absolutely adore this deck it has amazing imagery however because everything is well, black we're looking at a very dark reading so I don't use it very often so of course so of course we have the moon and I love this rendition it's so beautiful of course we're looking at the 18th card in the major arcana and of the moon card is a gatekeeper. The original card has two amazing tower-esque pillars in the background. And we have those same pillars here. We have that ability to go through this gateway. However, if we keep paddling upstream, we will never get there. We will never bask in the moonlight. Enjoy that seen that view from where we're standing. We're so busy focusing in on how hard we're paddling and how much further we need to go to get where we need to go. It's about well, being okay with not knowing where we're going and knowing that we're not doing it alone. We have this amazing support team following and encouraging us forward. When we're paddling or flowing downstream, they're right beside us. They're paddling away, making sure that you enjoy this experience. Yes, there's hard work in this experience. However, we're working harder than we need to be. And we're trying to get to somewhere that isn't going to give us that fulfillment and that joy. When you let go and well, you find meaning in what it is that's occurring, you find joy and happiness, and you embrace that unknown, 
that is when you're going to go through that rite of passage and you're going to find and enjoy more abundance and more happiness. So the beginning of the week we can start to let go. Take that deep breath. Start participating in things that are life-giving and joyous for you. And the more you do that, and it doesn't have to be large leaps and bounds. We can, you know, spend a half an hour, 45 minutes. The more life-giving and joyous activities we bring in throughout our day, the more we're going to get to that point of well, walking through to that higher level. When we participate in life-giving and creative endeavors, we raise our vibration, which gives us the opportunity to seek opportunities, possibilities that we never thought possible. And that's what's going to happen in the middle of the week. The more we connect in with ourselves, the more we sit and be okay with that unknown, we're going to see those opportunities. They're going to come forward. They're going to be brighter and more exciting. And you can go check them out. Let's go on to the end of the week. What does the end of the week bring my picture stone friends? Eight of Pentacles. That mastery card. So we go from starting that initial trek, letting go and embracing all that the week and days have to offer into that very clear cut. This is really where you're going to find the excitement, the joy, the fulfillment. That boat ride gets more meaningful. You start to really connect in. You see those abundances starting to emerge and grow into something amazing. You have that sense of accomplishment which brings in that fulfillment. So the end of the week really is having your cake and eating it too opportunity. Let's look at the challenge because let's be honest there's going to be challenge and we need to look at it and face it. What challenge will my picture stone friends face for the week of October 18th through the 24th? The Six of Cups. Them good old days. Do you remember a time when you could go outside without a mask? Them are good old days. Getting stuck in that heartache, in those good old days. Thinking, there's nothing more than what I have and I need to keep rowing upstream to get back to what once was. Once was was never more. We won't see that again. We need to create something even grander, even more amazing. And we can't do that if we're stuck in the past. Our ego is going to play up on this. Yeah, but, yeah, but. Do you remember when? Sure, a lot of us would go back and, and would love to redo our childhood, where we got to run and play in fields. And our biggest challenge was how we're going to get our bike up that ramp so that we could flow down it and go. Those are experiences that we've already done. We can't live in the past. We need to live in the here and now. We don't want to get caught up in the future and rowing to places that don't exist anymore. We need to move forward. We need to connect in to what will be. And that's yet to be decided. We don't want to get hyper-focused in on that end goal because that's when we start to, again, row upstream. Focus in on the here and now. 
in what you're creating, what passions we can indulge in right now. That's going to help get through some of those challenges of letting go and stopping to well, row upstream so feverishly. Let's go on to some blessings. What blessing can my picture stone friends embrace for the week of October 18th through the 24th? Water magic goes a lot with letting go, going with the flow, right? That water, it's a clear message here. We've got water in this card, we've got water in this card, and of course, in our first card. Water is an amazing healing and cleansing element that we can use to our advantage. We need to let go of some of that gunk, some of that headstrong, ego-driven, blinders-on energy. We still want that passion, that determination and willpower. We need to wash away those blinders though. And the best way to do that well, is through setting some intention when you're playing in water. Setting that intention that when you go into the shower, not only are you going to get ready for the morning, but you're going to clear out any of that gunk that's built up. Not only leaving you physically refreshed, but spiritually. You can take it one step further and visualize that gunk being washed away. Now don't worry, it won't hurt anybody. Your guardian angel will transmute it before it hits, well, the, the drain. Helping you to feel stronger and more empowered to embrace what the week is going to offer you. Meditation for creativity. Like I said, that passion, that creativity, that's a big piece of this. We're losing that creative connection, that meaningful and connectedness of what we're doing. We have no fulfillment, there's no joy. It's very monotonous and, well, very exasperating. We need that creative energy to help bring forth that mastery to help bring meaning into where we're going and creativity does not always mean painting or crafts creativity is something that you do that brings you joy I have clients whose creative outlet is computer programming is tinkering with their cars and that's okay do it. If it brings you joy, you feel like you're being able to express yourself through a creative means, then that's perfect for you. Creativity for everybody is very different. And that's what makes us very unique. And that's what makes us so strong as a collective. And while well, meditating for creativity, I have a meditation that I completed with Archangel Joe Fell a number of weeks ago. It was a beautiful meditation and that's what we looked at, is calming our mind so that we can connect in to that creative energy. I also did one with Archangel Uriel where again we calmed ourselves so that we were invigorated and that flaming passion burns bright. I'll leave a link below and above to my Archangel playlist so you can well use whatever tool that I have for you to your advantage to support you in getting all that you can from this week. All right, let's end off on any further wisdom, guidance, and support that we can offer my Picture Stone friends for the week of October 18th through the 24th. The Eight of Cups. 
As you can see, this is one of the reasons I don't use this deck very often. I know it's the Black Cat's Tarot, however, everything is so dark. The Eight of Cups is not a dreadful card. We're looking at that inner journey, that understanding of self, and we need that. We need to understand ourselves more fully to connect in to this creativity, to connect into our passions. It's the only way we can master things. And that's the only way you're going to get your cake and eat it too. Understanding self also helps to bring in that fulfillment, that joy, and of course, that abundance. Now, of course, we have those double eights. And anytime you see that multiple eight, the angels are telling you to stay true to your passions and that abundance and prosperity is coming your way. Again, just reinforcing what we were saying up here. Then the Nine of Wands. Oops. Nines are about all that we've lived through, all those challenges that we've overcome. And with the Nine of Wands, we are looking at that support and foundation. The original nine, Pamela Coleman Smith has this man, he's leaning heavy on his wand. You can see he's been through the battle in the ringer. He has a bandage that crosses over his head, which signifies a psychic wound rather than a physical wound. And all of us are kind of feeling that, that frazzled, burnt out, beaten up energy. Like I said earlier, many of us are feeling like we're at the end but we really can't take very much more of this. However, when you stop and look behind you, that's when you realize how much you have overcome, and how much support you have behind you. And, well, that's very true. Not only in that physical sense, but in our spiritual sense as well. Like I said in the introduction, the veil is thinning. We have the ability to connect into our amazing support team that's been with us the longest, that astral support team. Two weeks ago, I did a meditation where I introduced you to a tool to connect in. And last week, I added to that fantastic meditations to connect in to a support team that has been there and, well, it isn't always thanked. It's a hard job, many of us have done it, and, well, we understand on an energetic level, when you think about it, how challenging it is to, well, go through the same motions, watch that person struggle as they swim upstream so fervently and get nowhere. Connecting in and adding some support on that spiritual realm to our journey. I do have a link below to my Just You and Me playlist where you're gonna find both meditations. It doesn't matter your skill ability with connecting in. Start off with the first one and if you have connected in and that's a skill you've been working on, you're gonna understand the tool and you can go on to the second. If you need, you can revisit that first one a number of times. We connect into your guardian angel, and some of us are blessed with more than one. So you'll want to redo that exercise to connect in with both of them, or all of them. If your skill level, you're finding that you're still really new at this, you can revisit that tool as often as you need to feel more confident in your abilities, then progress on to the second one. These tools are for you to use as you need. And of course, with that nine, we're also looking at our physical support team. Who's been there, well, as long as they've been in your life? Reaching out to them and asking for that support as you need it. And I know Mercury Retrograde adds a lot of stumbles into this. But take it slow. And if you've seen my Mercury Retrograde readings, you'll know. Just check into it. Check into what they're hearing and verify what you've heard. Then finally, the Two of Swords. 
that balance and duality. We need to balance out our world. And yes, it's easier said than done. Because sometimes at work, we do need to paddle upstream. It feels like you're a salmon trying to get to the spawning area and it's just a never-ending battle. That's understandable. However, on that personal and spiritual level, we need to balance things out with that passion and that creativity that isn't so deadline driven, that isn't so demanding, that's more fun and gives you out of your head. You get out of your way and you go with that flow. Of course, we have that sword and like I just said, Mercury retrograde it's a bear. We're going to get caught up in our past. We're going to get caught up in that emotion. We need to balance things out. Yes, it's important to be working from that creative passion center. However, when those emotions start to get high, we need to balance it out with some critical thinking so we have a clearer understanding of where it is we're going. I want to thank you guys so very much for spending time with me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and that you're able to gain some insight and direction into what the week is holding for you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There is so much more amazing coming your way, my friends. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight and healing is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page. I know, lots of people have them. And of course, I've got lots of tiers and perks. Those perks, you're looking at free readings and healings. Additionally, I also have a Patreon exclusive library of videos, just to support those who support me. I provided a helpful link below so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my picture stone friends. Hello and welcome my rose quartz friends. This reading is especially for you. Now like always, I have the full decks about the tarot and the oracle cards so you get the most comprehensive and meaningful reading for you. Without further ado, Let's see what the week holds for my Rose Quartz friends. What can my Rose Quartz friends expect from the week of October 18th through the 24th? Hibernation and regeneration. Ooh, this week's about you guys taking care and loving you. No, I know that many of us are thinking of hibernation. I don't know about you guys, but we got our first dump of snow uh, last night. So most of us are like, ooh, blanky time and cozy. This isn't a forever hibernation. This isn't running and turtling ourselves. This is about well, you and time for you to rejuvenate and heal you. And the only way we can do that is giving ourselves a little extra time, a little extra energy, and taking care of ourselves. And sometimes it is that blanky time that we need, especially when the snow is falling like it is outside for me. So let's look at this week. I know I prefer to be snuggled up in my blankie, but sometimes we need to put our friends' needs just above our own, just for a little while. So let's look at this week a little bit more. What does the beginning of the week bring? My Rose Quartz friends. The Knight of Pentacles. Don't ask me why the Knight is balancing in on a tightrope over water. It's kind of weird in this deck. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this deck. The imagery is fantastic. However, the Ace of 
Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles, they have a lot of water, which usually isn't a pentacle theme. Pentacles, that earthy, grounded growth. However, sure, you know what? Some of us, especially now, feel like we're walking a tightrope, juggling and trying to keep things under control. So pictorially, it does kind of sum up where we're at. However, the knights there, usually on a horse, and I absolutely adore the horses in this deck. They are this kind of weird cat-like horse. It's awesome. But that knight really talks about that regeneration and working on self. The original knight that Pamela Coleman Smith drew, of course, he's the only knight not in motion. He's standing steadfast on the field that he had worked so hard on. And those fields, that's us. Working hard and setting those intentions. And, well, healing and nurturing us. No matter what the world is throwing at us. And of course, this does bring up a unique perspective on balance. We need to balance ourselves out so that we are able to deal with that rejuvenation and healing of self and then the demands of that every day. That importance, well, we're starting the week off well, with that night. We need to set those intentions. We need to start digging in and working on ourselves and well, rejuvenating and healing us. Let's go into the middle of the week. What does the middle of the week bring? My Rose Quartz friends. The Three of Pentacles. We're still in that earthy energy, which is awesome because in this first one, she's hibernating in a crystal cave. That earthy connection, that groundedness, well, it's going to go a long way in helping you rejuvenate and strengthen you. Now, the Three of Pentacles. It's a card I like to call the Triforce Perfecta. It's a cooperation card where you work with your physical support team and, of course, that astral support team to get the job done. Not only just to get it done, but to bring fulfillment and beauty into whatever it is you're trying to achieve whatever you're trying to accomplish. So, working with that physical team, I know really isn't part of that hibernation. However, like I said, we need to balance things out. We need to take time for just us. We also need to reach out and ask for the support we need. I know human connection is still a little bit hard. Many of us are struggling with a lot of restrictions we have the virus spiking in different areas that doesn't stop us from connecting in it just means we have to connect in in unique and creative ways additionally and this is a big addition like i said in the introduction we have the thinning of the veil that third piece to our triforce perfecta of course is our astral and spiritual support team we have a unique opportunity to connect in with greater ease as that veil thins. During the middle of the week, it would be a fantastic time to connect in and strengthen and work on that relationship. Last week and the week before, I published two meditations. Two weeks ago, I published the introduction to this series. I'm not too sure how many there's going to be in my connections or channeling series, that introduction, it's an essential one. It gives you that foundation and tool to connect in with that support team that's been with you since the beginning. And yes, that support team evolves and changes. However, your guardian angel or guardian angels have been with you since conception. I have a link below to that playlist. It's a Just You and Me playlist and you'll find that introduction. No matter what your skill level is, I recommend you start at that introduction so you get introduced to the tool and that visualization I use to connect in. Because in the second one, we zip through 
that initial stage and we go in deeper and well it's hard to go in deeper when you're still trying to understand that tool to begin with and if you're new to this you may want to try that first one a number of times that first introduction we're connecting in with our guardian angel and of course if you have more than one and you may find out that you have more than one when you participate in this visualization well you may want to try it multiple times to connect in with each of them or all of them some people have a number of guardian angels supporting them that middle of the week though we're looking at that connection because part of that rejuvenation is working with and connecting in with our support teams because they can revitalize us like nothing else all right let's go on to the end of the week what does the end of the week bring my rose quartz friends the empress the third card in the major arcana of course that gives us double threes the empress we're looking at that nurturing that loving and very fertile energy the end of the week we're going to see things kind of hit a crescendo as we work on ourselves we start to connect in and strengthen ourselves and those relationships and gaining that added support that we need that fertility of growth that rejuvenation that healing well it's gonna be amazing you're going to feel more invigorated more inspired you're gonna gain added support added guidance on how to go forward and what aspects are really meaningful for you the important part take that time gain that guidance and then incorporate it into our everyday we can't just sit idle and not take that information and incorporate it in. It does us no good. It's like having running shoes and never using them and expecting to be able to run that marathon. We need to put that work into incorporating it in and taking those small steady steps and allowing for that growth to, to come forward, to occur naturally. Now, like I said, we do have double threes here. In that multiple three, the angels are telling you that something close to your heart needs to be expressed, which is very true. And you're going to have more of a connection with that as you start to heal and work on yourself. So let's look at the challenge, because this week is fantastic for you, my Rose Quartz friends. But, whoa! forgot how jumpy this deck actually is. What is the challenge that my Rose Quartz friends will face the week of October 18th through the 24th? The Four of Wands. Now fours are a foundational number that wand we're looking at that passion base the four of wands of course is a celebration card it's also a rite of passage card our ego is going to resist this rite of passage this working and healing on self and what's more this growth development and of course prosperity that will come when we work on ourselves we strengthen and heal and release what's not working. Additionally, we're going to have that challenge of trusting in and connecting in with our team, with our support. It doesn't feel like a time of celebration. Many of us are struggling. There's so much going on. And that heaviness, well, it too is going to, well, weigh heavy on us. Not to mention that stability, that foundation that the four brings us. We're going to feel unstable because we're going to feel so heavy 
things aren't going to go right. There's so much going on. How can I possibly take time for me? Focusing in on that grounding and that connection. Like I said, we may have to be creative with the way we connect. However, we can still do it. When we start to take those steps in connecting in and grounding ourselves, we're going to see this four turn from an obstacle to an ally. And this week very much becomes a rite of passage that we desperately need. It's up to us to put that work in and, well, gain all we can from this week. Let's go on to some blessings. What blessing can my Rose Quartz friends embrace for the week of October 18th through the 24th? Go with the flow. Oh yeah, most definitely. Instead of trying to paddle uphill or upstream, put the paddle away. Allow the universe to come in and support us, guide us. We don't know where we're going. We're so lost and confused in this veil of uncertainty and concern and fear that has shrouded the earth right now. We don't know our ups from our down. Letting go of that false control and accepting that guidance and that support. We need it now more than ever. Fire magic. And no, you don't have to be pagan or a witch to enjoy fire magic. That fire, that flame, it's within us. It's that passion. It's that creativity. It's what you need to express right now. That fire, that passion, that creativity, it burns bright within us. It will burn brighter the more we take care and rejuvenate ourselves. It's like adding a fresh piece of firewood to that already amazing bonfire that burns bright within us. We have more connection and more understanding of that fire the more we work on ourselves. That's what the fire magic is, is that connection into that passion and into that drive that we have naturally within ourselves. All right, we're gonna end off on any further guidance, wisdom and insight that we can share with my Rose Quartz friends for the week of October 18th through to the 24th. The Two of Cups. What a beautiful card. Again, we're in a boat. That boat metaphor, well, it seems to be important. That movement that connection. It's going to be an important part of your week. And yes, the Two of Cups, it's that everyday aspect of that loving energy. This isn't about a relationship with someone else. This week starts out with that hibernation. This is a connection and a relationship that we have with ourselves. Like I said, that understanding, that connection, and relationship we have with us, when we understand it better and are able to embrace and utilize it to our advantage, well, it's when that fire erupts, that relationship strengthens. We have a better connection to our higher self, to our intuition, than we do with our ego that's been holding us back so much. Your intuition? wants to see you go, go forward, to flourish, to prosper. Temperance, the 14th card in the Major Arcana. 
we're looking at that balance and energy flow. I picked it up here in the night where I said we needed that balance. Well, this is very true. That balance is going to go a long way. We can't just pull the covers over our head and avoid. This week isn't about avoidance. This week is about healing and rejuvenating. That balance is going to be essential. Another part of temperance, of course, is that energy flow. Our chakra system is well, an essential system within our body. We need to revitalize it, to nurture it, and to heal it so we feel more empowered and more able to take on whatever challenge waits for us that lies in our path. We need that balance. We need that flow. We need to make sure that we're not hyper-focusing and sending all our energy into one aspect of self. We need to focus in on ourselves as a whole rather than separate compartments. And finally, the Four of Cups. Of course, we're looking at those missed opportunities, those missed messages. This week offers us that ability to connect in, to receive that guidance. It's going to get us out of this stuck feelings of overwhelmed kind of lawness that we're having. We need to move forward rather than to stay here. We're finding limited joy and limited happiness. However, when we embrace and start to work on those messages, we take those little pieces, those little amazing nuggets of information, and we lay them out, we can start to form that puzzle. We can start to see more and understand more. Taking that information and actually working on it, moving us forward. We can't stay here. It doesn't feel good. And even if we took this week to rejuvenate and heal ourselves, if we don't start to move forward, we're going to have that overwhelming and exasperated feeling flare up and flood over us very quickly. So all this work would be for naught, because we didn't move forward. Taking that baby step up helps us get unstuck a little bit. Another baby step, even more. And before you know it, well, you're going with the flow, that creativity, you're able to express yourself. What's more, you feel amazing. That joy, that happiness, well, it's flourishing all around us. Now, of course, we have that double four. In angel messages, when you have that multiple four, the angels are telling you to focus in on that foundation to ensure that you're not forgetting to ground yourself. That foundation is essential. And that's kind of what we're working on, is building ourselves up, creating that stable foundation we have to overcome and well, go with what 2020 is giving us. But we can do it from a strong, stable standpoint. I want to thank you so much for joining me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and you're able to gain some insight and direction into what the week holds for you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. There is so much more coming your way, my friends. The best way to stay connected so you don't miss out on any of this amazing insight and healing is to subscribe to my channel and hit that little red bell so you don't miss a video. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page. And yes, I know lots of people have Patreon pages. And of course, I've got lots of tiers and perks. And those perks, of course, we're looking at free readings and healings from me. Additionally, I also have a Patreon-exclusive library of videos just for my supporters. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Rose Quartz friends.